Hello, I am Mikola Halchuk. I am from EGH University of Krakow and today I will be presenting the new language model for Ukrainian Liberta. And the title of the paper is Liberta Advancing Ukrainian Language Model and Through Returning from Scratch. Basically, in the last years, with the advance of natural language processing field, there are lots of lots of language models being released each month. And if you look at five years ago, there were like one, maybe two being released in that year. And now there are like almost a dozen of them. And this figure we can see on the slide is basically just the biggest models uh, over 10 billion parameters being released. Uh, those language models follow a specific architecture. They have a specific pre-training procedure, have a corresponding pre-training corpus and this actually implies that there are actually potential bugs, there are potential improvements that maybe at the time of the original pre-training were not known. So all of those decisions, all of those potential mistakes made along the way are what we had to rely on for the last years. Because the most prominent models in Ukrainian, the most prominent encoder-based models in Ukrainian are those uh, that were transferred from English. So, for example, we have this Bertsel Roberta model, which you can see on this slide, and it has been transferred from the English Roberta uh, using the special technique uh, called Bertsel presented in the paper by Benjamin Nilshofer, and it actually has been a state-of-the-art of bird like models, encoder-only models for Ukrainian, according to the results reported on the models card on Hanya Face Hub. Uh, we can see the results here. Uh, it, it was compared to the previously released models, which were already present and publicly known, and we can see that it actually scored the best results on all of the three tasks. Here. However, recently there were lots of corpora released for Ukrainian, either multilingual corpora like Culture Aids, which contain a substantial Ukrainian part, or even monolingual, specifically for Ukrainian designed corp uh, corpus like Ubertext 2.0. And this inspired us to challenge the status quo and see if we can reach and maybe even exceed the performance of models like Vatsal. So at the very start of the project, we searched for existing Ukrainian only as well as multilingual corpora with Ukrainian part. And it appeared that most of the high quality and even medium quality data was present only in small data sets, while large corpora often collected from common crawl were full of artifacts and those required thorough data cleaning efforts. Here we can see the, a few examples from the MC4 corpus. And we have some Greek text, we have some weird word segmentation, we have lots of acronyms, we have some mixtures of Russian and Ukrainian, all of those present in the corpus. So those examples are not actually cherry repeat, those were seen really frequently in their corpus, so that makes it not suitable for the real high quality model pre-training, and it requires lots of data cleaning. Yet uh, later in the autumn of 2023, uh, the Cultura Eats corpus was released, and it merged a few of the biggest actual corpora with additional pre-processing, like data duplication, data cleaning, and so on. Uh, and it contained the biggest part of Ukrainian, biggest number of tokens we have seen so far. So we uh, set it uh, to be our primary returning corpus. We can see in this slide that the number of tokens exceeds 38 billions, which is a really big number for Ukrainian. We have trained a byte pair encoding sentence piece tokenizer on 10 million paragraphs of CC100 text, including around 2.5 gigabytes of raw text data. 
the tokenizer is k sensitive and uh, it has the vocabulary size of 32,000 tokens and allows for byte fallback in case of unknown characters. It should choose a superior performance uh, with the other tokenizers for Ukrainian la language models and as well as multilingual language models uh, in terms of the average number of tokens per word and the percentage of direct hits stating the ratio of the words that have been replaced with a single token. And during empirical experiments, we actually have noticed that it has a, quite a poor performance in English. It appears that English is not represented well enough in Ukrainian uh, corpora, in Ukrainian textual data, and thus it makes the tokenizer quite difficult to learn some uh, Latin tokens. This can pose a challenge for the model when dealing with tasks like named entity recognition, because in Ukrainian text we can often see the company names, the product names written in English, so that can how its impact on the performance. For the pre-training procedure, we simply follow the original BERT paper with slight modifications because we do not use NSP objective. Uh, we mask 15% of the tokens randomly. We do not use a whole word masking. Uh, and since Cultura X has a lot of long documents as seen in our maximum sequence, we simply divide them into chunks of 512 tokens, including special tokens, and pad the last one to the longest in the batch. Uh, we use cosine learning rate schedule with a bit learning of 2 times 10 to the minus fourth and 5,000 for much steps. The effective batch size is 1,024, so that's 32 per GPU, considering that we have four gradient accumulation steps, and we train this model on the node of having eight uh, A140 gigabytes NVIDIA GPUs in a B-float 16 precision. Uh, the model was trained for 85,000 steps, which is a little over one epoch of Cultura Eats corpus. We can see in the table the most important hyperparameters. So we are now getting to the evaluation results of the model and due to the limited research on language modeling in Ukrainian because of the lack of computational power, data scarcity, there is no standardized and commonly accepted uh, language modeling benchmark for Ukrainian so far. There are counterparts in English well known as GLUE super glue or even in polish uh, clay benchmark introduced by Peter Rybart and hopefully this will change for the better uh, for Ukrainian in the coming years and to evaluate our model uh, extensively we need a set of diverse high quality set of tasks ranging from text and token classifications to reading comprehension, instructed question answering, and similar. In our case, we have followed the bad cell model evaluation, which was presented by Benjamin Minshofer. So if you remember, there were three data sets. And we are also adding a new data set, uh, which was created, uh, I guess, three years ago. And it's called Ukrainian News Classification. So we have four tasks. The first task is Nary UK. It's a dataset developed and curated by the Land UK project. It comprises over 6,000 named entities uh, and it is annotated over the text from the Brook Corpus of Contemporary Ukrainian. The second one is uh, NER as well. But this time we are using the Wikian dataset. It is a multilingual named entity recognition dataset from the Wikipedia articles. The Ukrainians, it is multilingual, so the Ukrainian part uh, comprises over 54,000 named entities. And notably, the average document in this dataset is quite short, often a single sentence, which can be like four, even five words. And it often contains like a single or maybe two named entities. 
Consequently, this emphasizes how well the common knowledge is embedded into the model, besides its ability to infer the class of the Todian from the context. And the third one is part of speech tagging based on universal dependencies and multilingual dataset with annotational grammar, so those are parts of speech, morphology, pro features, so on. We are using simply part of speech uh, tags. And the last one is Ukrainian news classification. It involves a corpus of news articles gathered from popular Ukrainian media outlets. It is an unbalanced test, uh, test classification task focused on predicting the news publication sources. And the test subset labels are not publicly available for this one. Um, and it can only be evaluated using the general competition for these tasks, which essentially what we did. Overall, we achieved superior performance compared to the multilingual counterparts like Islam Roberta and other models pre-trained from scratch specifically for Ukrainian. Yet the model shows an inferior performance compared with white cell on three out of four tasks, indicating that the amount of knowledge embedded in the English Roberta, which was later used to initialize the Ukrainian model, is still beyond reach uh, when pre-trained from scratch. But we are getting quite close. Uh, here we have some uh, hyperparameters used for fine-tuning, which were used to receive those results. Uh, they are not present in the... they are not reported in the paper, but we will add them to the model cards of the models on the Hugging Face Hub. So, what's now? Uh, what we can do? We can try to add those improvements to this rather simple approach which we had at, the, at first. And uh, we have pre-trained Liberta version 2, which is not uh, described in the paper because it was pre-trained only a month ago. And it has a few improvements compared to the previous model. First of all, the, we have a different tokenizer. We have trained a tokenizer with the vocabulary size of 64,000 tokens, so that's basically twice as much as as many tokens as there were in the first version. And it was trained on a much larger subset of data from CC100 corpus. Besides, we have added an uh, English part to that uh, pre-train uh, to that training uh, corpus, so it comprises like around 1.5% uh, of the overall data used for tokenizer training, uh, which is around 15 gigabytes. And we have taken this English text from the multi-news dataset. Uh, our idea was that in the news, there are often mentioned some named entities, some company names, some geographical entities, which essentially what we want to represent quite well in our Ukrainian texts. So using this kind of data to pre-train our tokenizer is uh, hopefully will boost our performance in that. Unfortunately, we had not no computational power to conduct an actual ablation studies uh, on regard with regard to that. Uh, but hopefully, we will manage to do that uh, soon. A new, uh, different improvement to that was a whole word masking. And the last one, which is actually quite an obvious improvement, is simply a longer training. This time we trained the model for 250,000 steps, which is a little over three full passes through the cultural aid corpus. Um, regarding the results, Liberta version 2 outperforms the first Liberta at each task. And this time it outperforms Wetzel model on two out of four tasks. And on the third task, it achieves a very similar results. Uh, and on Ukrainian news classification, there is still a noticeable gap in performance, which encourages us to improve the model even further. We have made the source code used for pre-training these models publicly available already, and we will be releasing these models uh, really soon.
Thank you for your attention.